Welcome once again to another exciting edition of Exhibit Tours, where we just can't seem to get out of Ohio. In this case, that's a good thing, because for the first time, we're touring at my favorite zoo. The Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, sprawled across over 400 acres, this is a zoo enthusiast paradise, known for having world-class exhibits, a long list of both fan favorite and species list hunter worthy animals, and a successful breeding program for many of these animals. Six main realms immerse you in the wildlife of the vast African plains, the treacherous Asian highlands, the tropical islands of Southeast Asia, the dense jungle of the Congo, and even Florida's wetlands. Thanks to all of you who voted, we'll be beginning with North America, the zoo's second largest and oldest region. Given my praise for this place, it should come as no surprise that, spoiler, this is my favorite North American exhibit I've seen so far. So now, let me show you why. Through the entrance and off to the right, before the addition of Adventure Cove, North America was the first region of the zoo experienced by many guests. It is a bit of a walk to the first animals, so I'll mention now that you'll never actually be able to experience everything that you're about to see in person, since a good portion of North America will be undergoing a major redevelopment starting this fall. So you can consider this video a time capsule showcasing what was for decades one of the country's premier North American attractions. The first animals we reach come with a conservation success story. The trumpeter swan may be easy to find in the wild these days, but less than a century ago, population surveys located only 69 remaining trumpeter swans in the lower 48 states. However, things took a turn for the better when a previously unknown population of thousands of trumpeter swans was discovered in Alaska kickstarting the species' road to recovery. After reaching the swans, your attention will quickly be drawn to a glass window that looks into an open woodland patrolled by the endangered Mexican gray wolf. Although the wolf's population is slowly increasing, there is still only around 250 living wild in the U.S., with an additional 300 to 400 in captive facilities in the US and Mexico. In Columbus, you can find breeding pairs Storm and Winter, who successfully raised a litter of pups together in 2019. Even though I don't really see anything wrong with their current habitat from a visitor's perspective, these wolves will be receiving a new state-of-the-art home as part of the renovations, which the zoo says will promote their pack lifestyle and the zoo's long-term goals of ensuring the species' survival. Moving straight ahead, a large, grassland hillside comes into view, which acted as the centerpiece of North America and could be seen from many vantage points around the complex. For many years, you would have seen Clover and Hermie, a majestic pair of American bison, before Clover's passing in 2022, followed by Hermie's passing earlier this year. The pair lived alongside a herd of pronghorn, who have also left the zoo and will be missed since it does not appear either species will be returning after renovations are completed. Instead, it seems this space will be utilized as part of the new Mexican wolf and black bear exhibits. Tucked in the middle of this grassland was another iconic Great Plains species on the opposite end of the size spectrum, the black-tailed prairie dog, who have also left the zoo with, as far as I'm aware, no expectation to return. Fortunately, they can be seen at many other zoos. Past the Habitat Hollow and the Bob Evans Barn, the trail swings to the right, guiding you to a habitat for Canada lynx, who we've seen many times before, so hopefully we can all survive not seeing them on this tour. Next door is another woodland setting with multiple vantage points where you can see two American black bears, 
Stevie and Joan, who arrived in Columbus as rescued cubs in 2016. Soon after their arrival, an adventurous Joan managed to escape her enclosure, causing a short lockdown before she was secured. If you were asked to name an animal that hibernates, there's a good chance you'd say a bear. However, in the scientific community, it has long been debated if bears can be considered true hibernators, since their period of dormancy is considered more of a light sleep, and the bear may wake if disturbed or if the weather turns unexpectedly warm. Black bear torpor habits also vary greatly across the species range, with northern black bears remaining inactive for up to seven months, while southern black bears may exhibit no hibernation behavior at all. By the Black Bears is a trail leading you off the main path to something you won't want to miss. Cutouts placed along the trail tell you what you're about to see. The pathway dead ends at a semi-obstructed view of the exhibit's back corner, so to get the best look you'll actually want to backtrack, take a right, and arrive at a tranquil view across a small pond, which should contain the Alaskan Moose. Not the easiest large mammal to find across the AZA, which makes it all the more special that you can currently see not one or two, but four of these majestic servants here in Columbus, all of whom were rescued as orphan calves in Alaska. Strawberry, the oldest of the four, was named after the road in Anchorage on which she was found wandering without her mother at around five months old and arrived in Columbus in October 2021. The other three moose, Bert, Violet, and Scarlet, all arrived together almost exactly a year after Strawberry, under similar circumstances and at similar ages. If you don't see this quartet in the main moose habitat, look for them in an adjoining, more functional secondary yard. The Alaskan moose is the largest of the eight recognized moose subspecies that can be found spread throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. To say that moose are good swimmers would be an understatement, since they can not only swim for miles at a time, but also dive up to 20 feet underwater in search of aquatic vegetation, sometimes leading them to venture into ocean waters. In fact, there have been a few recorded instances of moose falling prey to orcas. Despite this risk, Spending time in the water is good for a moose's longevity, since extended time standing in the water can reduce the stress on their bones and joints. Across from the second moose exhibit is a similar but larger paddock for reindeer, who are a noteworthy species for being one of the first ever animals to live at the Columbus Zoo when it opened in 1927. Now, halfway through North America, we're taking a portal from the old to the new, or at least newer, 2010's Polar Frontier, an eight and a half acre expansion themed as an Alaskan mining town that brings this stretch of the North American woods to the edge of the Arctic. Beginning to the left, placed in the middle of the complex is a simple habitat meant to appear as an abandoned workshed where the humans have left and a family of arctic foxes has moved in. More specifically, you can find Jack, Marco, and Hannah. Arctic foxes can survive incredibly harsh environments thanks to their thick fur and more compact bodies which reduce heat loss. These foxes primarily rely on lemmings for their meals, so much so that arctic fox populations will fluctuate regularly in response to the number of lemming available to eat. When food options are more scarce, arctic foxes will trail behind a larger arctic predator that we'll see shortly in order to scavenge any scraps left behind. Near the foxes is an inviting viewing shelter framing a picturesque, tranquil view of a trout-filled pond. But it feels like something's missing. Meet 19-year-old brown bear brothers Brutus and Buckeye. This dynamic duo has called the Columbus Zoo home since 2004, when they arrived as orphaned cubs after a man shot their mother in self-defense. Luckily, after realizing there was young cubs, the man took steps to ensure they would survive. 
even personally tracking the second cub for two weeks so that it could be captured and cared for. The boys are far from small anymore, weighing in at 1,200 to 1,400 pounds depending on the time of year, placing them amongst the largest terrestrial predators in the world. They are able to take down prey as large as a full-grown moose. However, they are mostly opportunistic omnivores, feeding on everything from berries and flowers to salmon and small mammals. While Brutus and Buckeye have remained together in Columbus, wild brown bears are solitary outside of mothers with cubs, with the males especially roaming vast territories. Their territory here can be viewed again across a moat in the middle, as well as from a second, larger viewing shelter at the opposite end of what is one of the more impressive brown bear homes in a U.S. zoo. This second shelter contains a graphic comparing the sizes of the different species of bears, highlighting the impressive height of upright brown and polar bears. Speaking of, directly opposite the second brown bear window is arguably the greatest of its kind in the States. Polar bears are the only true carnivorous bears and an iconic symbol of Arctic wildlife that is becoming more scarce, not only in the wild, but in zoos as well. Two currently called the Columbus Zoo home. This is Aurora, a 17-year-old female who was born at the Toledo Zoo. She is currently paired with a 23-year-old male named Lee. And although it's been a few years now, Columbus is one of the very few AZA zoos to have success breeding polar bears in the last decade, with five cubs born since the polar frontier's opening in 2010. While the above water view is breathtaking in its own right, for the best experience you'll want to venture below and journey under the water's surface. Right now you're probably anticipating seeing some epic footage of polar bears diving into the water. But unfortunately we can't have everything we want in life, so instead... Teleporting back to where we were in North America is a former bear exhibit now transformed into a home for North American river otters. But not for much longer, as the otters will also be receiving a new home in the upcoming renovations which will be located where the wolves are now, and looking at the renderings, it should be one of the most spectacular of its kind ever built. Moving up the path is a long mesh enclosed exhibit bookended by two glass viewing windows whose residents made quite the splash when they arrived in late 2020. Mountain Lions Captain Cal and sisters Goldie and Poppy are looking more grown up these days, but were just cubs when they were rescued after being orphaned by the California wildfires. They were first brought to the Oakland Zoo, and after recovering to good health, Columbus was selected to be their permanent home. Mountain lions are one of the America's premier apex predators, with powerful hind legs that help launch them into leaps that may reach 15 feet high and 40 feet in length, and propel them to speeds of 50 miles per hour. They are well adapted for making quick, deadly strikes, with toe pads that muffle their approach, sharp claws for gripping their prey, and strong jaws that can crush the victim's neck in a single bite. Across the path from the mountain lions is a log cabin with viewing of a sloping woodland clearing adorned with rock piles and logs. Home to something smaller, but no less ferocious, the Wolverine. While their name may have you thinking of wolves, and they kind of resemble a small bear, the Wolverine is in fact the largest member of the weasel family. They are known for taking down prey much larger than themselves, like caribou, and for being fearless even in the presence of much larger predators. Wolverines do have some bite to back up this big personality. Literally, their jaws are so strong they can eat frozen carcasses, bones, and all.
Columbus's resident Wolverines are Alvar and Guillotine, who the zoo claims are Ohio State fans, but as a Michigan native, I have to be skeptical that that's actually true. Over the train tracks and off to the right of the main path is a large walkthrough aviary dedicated to North America's smaller birds. There's dozens of species of songbirds, but I was more drawn to the many unique wading birds, including the American Golden Plover. The Virginia Rail is known for being seldom seen but frequently heard in its marshland homes. Male ruddy ducks with their bright blue bills will court a female by splashing around in the water and using their bill to blow bubbles. White-faced ibises congregate in large groups of up to 1,000, sometimes intermingling with the nearly identical glossy ibis, which has led some hybridization to occur. It is actually thought that white-faced ibises may have arisen from an early colonization of the Americas by the glossy ibis. Just past the aviary is a large flight cage for bald eagles, already one of the best around, but the eagles will nonetheless also be receiving a new home and be relocated near the start of the North America Trail in the near future. Moving along, you would have previously encountered a streamside home for American beavers, but it was already blocked off for construction, so finishing out the trail, you were offered more views of the bison and pronghorn on their grassland hillside, indicating that we've come full circle around North America, completing our first adventure at this top tier facility. With big changes coming soon, I do think the bison and pronghorn will be missed from this region, but I am nonetheless excited to see how the revamp takes the area's exhibitry and visitor experience to the next level. Let me know what you think of the renovation plans in the comments, and enjoy this preview of the next tour where maybe we'll leave Ohio.